after I stopped recording, uh, the gun started to lock up and I took the gun apart and I found this cylinder stop had broken. It's supposed to be right here. And I had broken off the firearm. I also noticed the paw looked a little funny and scraped up so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some replacement parts and talk to a couple gunsmiths. Um, I'll put some updates in the comments below if I find any and I'll make a full update video. But honestly, I still love the gun. It just, I think there's some internal problems that I'm going to get fixed. What's up guys? Today I'm doing a video on a revolver that made me fall in love with black powder shooting. This is the Uberti 1851 Navy with a five inch barrel. I love the five inch barrel. The longer ones, the 7.5 inch, they just feel front heavy and uncomfortable to me. The five inch just balances so well and I love the aesthetics of it. Now, there is a trade off. You do get a shorter uh, loading lever. So you do lose a little bit of leverage with it, but me personally, I had no problems loading this firearm. It's 36 caliber and I usually load it around 20 grains. So it's got color case hardening on it and I've learned to love it. I, I didn't like it when I first got it. I know that it's a good finish. I just didn't like the looks of it. I like all blue gun, but it's grown on me. I like the way it looks with the blue and the color case hardening. I still don't like the glossy look on those grips, so I may have to change that out at some point. I love the, the, the finish on this gun. The bluing looks really nice, and I love the uh, naval engraving it has on the cylinder. I think it looks really nice. Of course, the caps are already locking up. All right. Also, the action is super smooth on this gun. I've shot a lot of Pietas, and at least the examples I shot weren't exactly the most smooth pistols. Uh, I have this Remington 1858 uh, replica by Pieta, and it is not a smooth action. <laughs> now I'm comparing two different calibers, but I, I find, for one, look how long it is, so it's really front heavy. Uh, but two, it is not a smooth action. It's a strong action, but it's not exactly smooth compared to the Uberti, so that's something I noticed right off the bat. And also, on uh, Pietas, they tend to put their markings on the side of the barrel. I'm not a big fan of this. On you birdies, they actually hide it underneath the loading lever and it gives it a lot more clean look on the barrel. So that's something I really appreciate about you birdies over Pietas. But just because I think this gun is finished better and smoother, it still has some rough spots. Uh, these things are coming in at a low price point, so uh, there's unfinished areas if you start taking the gun apart. And one of them I found was on the hammer face, which is very common from what I've been seeing. So around this little notch here, this notch is for the safety. Um, in between each cylinder is a little peg and you line up that peg and you can lock it between cylinders so you can safely load six rounds into this gun without you know having to have an empty cylinder. That notch was very uh, roughly cut out of the hammer. Actually, I noticed after I shot it, the pressure knocked out some metal and made the lines look a little cleaner. It looked a lot more rough when I first looked at it. Um, I 
been talking to some people and they're starting to think that's the reason for the, uh, the, the cap jams. I don't think I got through a cylinder without having some sort of cap issue. Um, it could be because of that hammer face being so rough and there's an edge underneath it. I'm going to have to take a stone to that eventually and clean that up and see if that's the reason why I'm having issues with uh, cap jams because I don't think I got through a cylinder without at least one issue. Man, having a hard time with these caps. Oh, it's cap lock again. That is so cool. Okay, this is what a cap lock looks like. You can see that cap's in there. Hangs up the action. You can see how it fell down like that, and if I fired it, it'd probably get in the way. Yeah, see how it gets in the way? It's just what you get with uh, these black powder revolvers, is you'll get cap hang-ups. Oh, here we go. It. That was a lot. Look at all the smoke. Oh, nice. The last shot of this is going to be 15 grains. This should be it right here. 15 grains. <laughs> Now the sights are on the hammer on this gun and these guns are notorious for shooting high and it shot high for me. <laughs> of course, there's a cap jam. There it goes. That's all of them. You can see how much of a pain in the ass these cap jams are. The trigger pull on this gun is phenomenal. Now, the website, I think is, they were saying around four pounds. I would be a little bit surprised by that. It, uh, it feels more like three when I was comparing it to my other uh, three pound triggers. Might have a, oh, you have a cap lock. Ah. Yeah, you'll get some hot uh, caps. There we go. 
All right, here's Alex's group. And you can see the wad marks, there's two of them. But it's still, there's another one, I just saw that. And there's another one. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can see most of them on here. Well, anyways, all the shots, we're in a pretty tight group actually, but still really high. Were you going for the bullseye or where were- I was aiming around there, yeah. Yeah, so it's still going high at, what, maybe seven yards? <laughs> okay, this time I'm gonna go way low. Of course, the caps are already locking it up. So you get your powder measurer and it's set for 20 grains. I tried 22 but it seems like it performs a little bit better with 20 grains. So get your flask, you pour it in till it's, might be running out of, there we go. You can see why there's a mess all around me. And then when you close this, we'll take off the excess and you have 20 grains of powder in there. And then you dump it straight into the chamber. I do a good little shake to make sure there's no remaining powder in there. There's not. And you get a wad. This is a pre-lubricated wad. And you stick it in there. Try to get it as even as possible like that. And then with a stick or a ramrod, you just seat it down a little bit so you know that it's down on the powder and you get your ball which this is 36 caliber you stick that right on top and then you get it under this loading lever lever ah, probably didn't see that you make sure it's seated now I like to leave it in there so that I know the cylinder is not going to move while I'm loading up the next chamber. That way I don't lose track. You just do it all again. And I'm an amateur. That's why I'm fumbling around with this stuff. <laughs> there it goes. Maybe that. There we go. Access into the box. Instead of all over the table, which is still going all over the table. Pour it in. Like I said, I like to churn it just to make sure that it's all going in. Check it, it's empty. Get your pre-lubricated pad. Take it in there like that. Push it down. Ball. And then seat it. Oh. Of course, I'm probably not showing you very well on camera. Then I go around and make sure all the balls are seated. That one needed to go down a little bit more. Yeah. All right, that should be good. Okay, and now you put the caps on the nipple. You push down, make sure that they're seated on there. And of course, it's a little bit chilly today, so my hands are a little shaky. And gripping a small cap like that is a little bit tricky for me. There it goes. Now some people load five shots and leave it on an empty cylinder, but there are on these reproductions a safety notch in between the cylinders. So I load up six. There we 
go. And then get to the notch in the middle like that. Pull back on the hammer just a little bit. And see it's between the two caps, so even if I dropped it, it wouldn't go off. What a nice trigger. This assembly of this handgun is really easy. You take this wedge out and the barrel will come off and the cylinder will come out. Really simple. But I took it a step further because this thing got filthy when I shot it. I mean, it was all in the action. I wanted to get it thoroughly cleaned so I wouldn't uh, risk any corrosions. So I took the gun completely apart. Take the, the grips off. There is a screw right here that holds this in place. You take this one off and then you take these two on the back off. Once that comes off, the grip will come off. The uh, main hammer spring will come out with it because it's attached to this back of the grip. Then you take these three screws out and the trigger guard comes out. Then you got a screw here. This is for your hammer. This is for your trigger and this is for your cylinder stop. And yeah, it's pretty simple. That was all six, with a lot of caps <laughs> getting hung up in that action. Woo! There we go. I got them out. There's like three or four of them like stacking up there, and I'm like, why is this thing so hard to cock? And then after the last shot, I look, and there they are piled up. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I was able to get to run that well. But uh, all the cylinders are empty, so. I can now flag myself. <laughs> Whee! All right. So this was my first black powder firearm. It's a Pieta replica of the Remington 1858. Uh, I had fun shooting this. It was the very first time I ever shot black powder and I really enjoyed it, but I found it very uncomfortable. I mean, it's front heavy, um, it's just so stiff to cycle that action. I just found myself like very uncomfortable with this pistol. It was fun to shoot, don't get me wrong, but I never had a desire to shoot it again. After I shot it once, I'm like, oh, that was a lot of fun. And I've never shot it again. That was like six years ago. And um, I still don't really have the, the uh, desire to shoot this thing again. But on my Colt, or the Pieta, I should say. I want to shoot this thing again. It handles nicely. I like the way it feels on my hands. It balances well. It's such a slick action. It's just, I, and I, I personally, I love the looks of it more than the, uh, the Remington. That's just me. I love this gun. Honestly, this is what got me into black powder. I have a flint lock, which was frustrating because I couldn't get the thing to reliably go off. I have my Pieta that's really front heavy. I got a pepper box that I can't get it to fire. <laughs> I mean, this gun really made me love it and I want to buy more ammo for it. So probably in the summer, I'm going to shoot this thing more. I'm going to definitely uh, try to smooth out the action where I can. I also want to see about that play in the action and see if I can get that out because that seems like a lot of play to me. I'm going to clean up the, uh, the hammer face. There's also, um, I've seen some videos of people cutting in that notch where the rear side is to, um, I 
hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I got another black powder gun coming up, but it's unique. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. All right. And those caps. <laughs> yeah, they're they're nasty little things. All right, the last six. And there's three more, but last full cylinder. Good thing too, because it's getting dirty. Whew, it is filthy. I think that's all of them. Get these stupid caps out of here. <laughs>